The Gerblin's been swinging a hot bat of late. Seven for his last 15. Here's the two and one. Deep to left. That ball is gone. The crowd loves it. I've never heard this much generic goblin noise. Hey gang, and welcome back. Just so you know, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, one word, at flipsidegaming.com to get 10% off orders $10 or more. You can also use the promo code at Original Magic Art on everything except for paintings. And finally, you can use the code at mtg.multizone.ca to get 10% off of your orders of singles. Using the code will help you save some money and help out the channel at the same time. I also want to let you know that Flipside Gaming will be giving away a box of War of the Sparks. From April 1st through May 6th, any order that's over $10 or more will get you entered to win. One entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Today's game was filmed at Wizard's Tower in Ottawa. I'm going to be filming there periodically, so if you're looking to join me there, message me on Facebook or Twitter. Today's game has me playing my mediocre mist form, and I keep a soul ring, two islands, quicksilver fountain, rhystic study, inundate, and amoeboid changeling. We have a new Adam to the channel playing his acrobatic Akiri and tight route walking Timna, and he keeps a chaos warp, a terminate, a worm coil engine, sword of feast and famine, noxious cure hulk, evolving wilds, and a mountain. Peter, who's also new to the channel, is playing the entrancing vampire Etrata, keeping two islands, Makokoro, center of the sea, Fencer Shaper Savant, a swamp, Fumble, and Panharmonicon. And last but not least, Scott is playing the Duke of Dumpsters, Doretti, keeping three mountains, Trading Post, Gilded Lotus, Chandra Flamecaller, and Darksteel Citadel. Scott wins the die roll and starts us off. Scott plays a mountain and passes. Peter plays an island and passes. I play an island and I paint a target on myself by casting Soul Ring. Adam plays an Evolving Wilds, cracking it to find a basic and pass to Scott. Scott plays a Dark Seal Citadel and passes. Peter plays an island and passes. I also play an island as well and I cast Rhystic Study, solemnly swearing to not miss a trigger. Adam plays a mountain and casts a Kiri, and I draw from the study. I bet you thought I was going to miss it. Scott also plays a mountain and passes. Peter plays a swamp and follows my lead, casting his own Rhystic Study. He can't pay the one for it, and I get to draw. I play an island, and I cast Misform, paying the one for Peter's study and passing to Adam. Adam plays an isolated chapel and passes. Scott drops a mountain and casts Basalt Monolith. He pays the one to deny me the draw, and Peter gets to draw a card. Peter plays Makokoro as his land for turn, and he casts a Hedron Archive, unable to pay the one extra. I draw, and we move to my turn. I play an island for turn, and cast Mindstone, paying the one. I then drop Vidalcan Shackles, paying the one again, and I move to combat. I swing Misform at Peter because I know he won't forget his triggers, and I inevitably will, so it's out of jealousy. I debate on scooping at this point to not lose my flawless study record, but stay on for the table. At the end of my turn, Adam casts Chaos Warp on my shackles and doesn't pay the one extra for either studies, so Peter and I draw. I reveal Phyrexian Metamorph and have it become an Akiri. Adam casts a Walking Ballista, paying one into each X. He then pays the one to deny me the draw and lets Peter draw a card. Moving to combat, Adam hits Peter with a Kiri for one commander damage and passes to Scott. Scott drops his Gilded Lotus, paying one again to deny me, but lets Peter draw. He then casts a Clock of Omens, which has Peter and I both drawing, and he passes turn. Peter plays a currently lackluster Cabal Coffers for his turn, and pays only the normal four for a Panharmonicon, letting me draw. Peter then moves to his end step and discards down to seven. I draw for turn and play Darksteel Citadel. I pay 4 to cast a Merfolk Sovereign, paying the extra for Peter's study. Moving to combat, Misform goes at Peter again while I show Adam how it's done by swinging my cloned copy of Akiri at him for 4. His is only a 1 4, so he just takes the hit. I then discard down to 7 and I pass. Adam casts a main phase terminate and deals with my Akiri, and he pays the 1 extra to deny me the card draw as he destroys my creature. He then heads to combat, Akiri's favorite phase, and hits Scott for one before passing. 
Scott plays a thespian stage and pays 7 mana to cast a mere battle sphere. Responding to the study triggers on the stack, Scott taps the Clock of Omens and his Darkseal Citadel to untap the Gilded Lotus, and he taps the Lotus to pay for the triggers. The sphere then enters, gaining him 4 mirrors, and he passes to Peter. Peter casts a Commander Sphere, and then Gaunti, not paying for either study triggers. I draw the cards, as Peter uses his first Gaunti trigger on Adam's library. He then resolves the second trigger, targeting Scott. Peter then passes, and at the end of turn, I cast Factor Fiction, targeting Adam to make the piles. I take the pile of Path of Ancestry and the Wizard Tutor card. I draw for turn, playing a Nykthos as my land for turn, and I Wizard cycled my Vidalcan Aether Mage to go and find Patron Wizard and put it to my hand. I then cast the Patron Wizard and let Peter draw. Moving to my combat step, I tap the Merfolk Sovereign to make Mistform unblockable and smack Peter for another 4. I then pass my turn and discard down to 7. Adam draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire, cracking it and losing 1 to go and find Blood Crypt. He takes 2 more as it comes into play to have it come in untapped, and he then passes. Scott draws and plays a Sequestered Stash as his land for turn. He taps a Mirror and the Clock to untap his Monolith, and then pays a lot of mana for a Planar Bridge. He still has enough to also pay 2 to deny the study triggers from Peter and I. I then tap my Patron Wizard to force Scott to pay 1 or have the spell countered, which he readily does. I can't stop and won't stop as I activate Nykthos for 7 blue, and I delve away most of my graveyard to cast a Dig Through Time. I thankfully find a commit and use it to at least stop the bridge for a few turns. Scott then taps two more mirrors to untap the Lotus, and then casts Chandra Flamecaller. He upticks her, making two elemental tokens, and swings them at me for six, and the battle steer at Adam for four. We both take the hit, and the elementals then die, and Peter realizes we both miss the Chandra triggers for our studies. Adam is very quick to help me with my die of shame. Peter pays 7 in his main phase to overload a Cyclonic Rift, and I pass priority to Adam when I have no response. Adam uses Mortify to kill Gonti, but the spell is stopped with the Swan Song. Adam gains the Bird token that is then immediately thrown back into the Void as it's bounced back to his hand. Peter then moves to combat and hits Scott for 2 with Gonti. I cast Soul Ring, Mind Stone, and Ristic Study, paying the 1 extra each time. I then discard down to 7 as I pass to Adam. Adam is wishing for a land at this point and is sorely disappointed. He instead casts a Stoneforge Mystic in his main phase, and Peter and I draw while Adam goes to tutor for an equipment. He settles on Lightning Greaves and puts them to hand and then casts them. Peter and I get to draw a card as we move to Scott's turn. Scott plays an Urza's Mind and recasts his Lotus. We get to draw from it, and Scott then recasts the Monolith. He pays the one this time to deny Peter a card, letting me draw. Scott then brings back the Clock of Omens and can't pay the extra, so Peter and I draw. Peter plays a Sunken Hollow as his land for turn and casts Displaced to bounce Gondi. Gonti re-enters and triggers twice, and Peter targets Adam and Scott once more. He then casts the Grim Monolith he stole from Scott, and I draw a card. Peter also then casts the stolen Bloodforged Battle Axe from Adam and equips it onto Gonti. Moving to combat, Gonti hits Scott for 4, and Peter gains a token copy of the Battle Axe. Peter then resolves a Thief of Sanity, and I get to draw again. Moving to his end step, he discards down to 7. I play my Path of Ancestry tapped, and recast the Patron Wizard, letting Peter draw. I make 4 blue with Nykthos, and I pay the rest to cast a Galecaster Colossus. Peter tries to stop the Colossus with a Thought Collapse, but with no open mana, his spell is countered as I tap my Patron Wizard and draw from my Rhystic Study. Moving to my end step, I have to discard pretty heavily to go down to 7. Adam draws and plays a Plains. He casts the new All-Star for White Mages, Smothering Tithe, and Peter and I draw our last three cards before having to pay two moving forward, before Adam then casts a Goblin Welder and passes to Scott. Scott draws, and Adam gains a treasure token as he doesn't pay the two. He does play an Arch of Araska in his main phase, and realizes he has City's Blessing. He recasts the Battlesphere, 
and with the smothering tithe almost acting as protection against the studies, Peter and I don't draw when he doesn't pay the one extra. Scott then taps two mirrors to untap the Gilded Lotus, and is able to recast Chandra Flamecaller once more. He then taps more artifacts to untap the Lotus, and he casts Doretti. Scott then upticks Chandra to make the 301 Elemental tokens, and Peter says if he doesn't attack him, he won't attack Scott back. Scott doesn't roll like that, and goes full tilt into Peter. Peter blocks one of the elementals with a thief, and then takes three. In his second main phase, Scott up ticks to ready, discarding nothing, and passes. Peter draws, and Adam gains another treasure token. Peter then casts a Venser, Shaper Savant in his main phase, and bounces a Smothering Tithe back to Adam's hand, and the second trigger bounces Chandra back to Scott's. Peter then casts a Ravenous Chupacabra, blowing up the Battle Sphere and a Mirror token, and I draw from him casting it. Peter then moves to combat and hits Doretti with Gaunti for 4. At the end of turn, I tap my Gilcaster Colossus to bounce the Panharmonicon to Peter's hand. I start my turn off right with a Gale Rider Sliver, paying the one extra for the study. I then activate Nykthos, naming blue, and I make 7 mana. I tap a bit more to kick right of replication, targeting the Colossus. I don't pay the one for Peter's study trigger, and he draws a card and tries to cast Fumble on the giant. I counter it by tapping my patron wizard, and with the Fumble out of the way, I gain 5 tokens of Galecaster Colossus, and lots of ways to bounce or counter things I don't like. I then play an island for my turn, and I move to combat. I swing the original Colossus at Peter, who chumps with his Chupacabra, and I then pass to Adam. Adam draws and plays a Swamp for his turn. He then drops his Sword of Feast and Famine, and he pays the one for the study triggers. He then sacrifices some treasures to equip the sword onto his goblin Welder, who immediately swings itself at Scott, dealing three. Adam gets to untap his lands, and Scott discards a trading post. In his second main phase, Adam casts a Noxious Gearhulk, killing Gaunti as it enters, and gaining Adam three life. He then moves the Greaves onto the Hulk, and passes turn. Scott draws for turn, and Peter and I realize we missed the Hulk trigger. Scott decides to activate the arch and draws a card, and he then pays 5 to cast a Paradox Engine, which resolves despite Adam suggesting that I use Patron Wizard and the Gilcaster Colossus to counter it. Scott then taps the Mirror and Clock to untap the Lotus, and things are looking kinda grim. He then taps more Mirrors to untap the Basalt Monolith, and Scott then moves to recast Chandra, and I tap the Colossus to force him to pay 1 for it, responding to the untap trigger from the Paradox Engine. He can't, so she gets countered, and before letting the engine trigger resolve and tapping his permanence, I tap another Colossus to bounce the Paradox engine back to Scott's hand. Scott then untaps for the engine, and retaps the Lotus and the Monolith to recast it. With the spell in the stack, I flash in Stunt Double, having it become a copy of Venser, and I bounce the engine back to Scott's hand. At this point, there's very little I can do to stop the Paradox engine from resolving, but it's just a matter of limiting how much mana Scott will have once it's on the field. He then taps the mirrors and the clock to untap his two mana rocks, and this time upticks to ready, instead discarding his Paradox Engine to draw a card. Scott then casts Solemn Simulacrum, and Peter and I draw in tandem, as Scott doesn't pay the one. Scott goes to find a mountain, and passes. Peter draws for turn, and plays an Urborg, with his coffers now netting him mana rather than losing him some. He activates the coffers for 9, and pays 4 to cast Damnation. I don't have enough to counter it with the Patron Wizard, so I tap my Gilcaster Colossuses to bounce a bunch of Peter's stuff in response. The board then gets wiped, and Peter recasts the Archive, letting me draw. Peter then casts the Gaunty Stolen Copy of Metalworker, and passes, discarding down to 7. I pay for my own Hedron Archive, and then a sort of the anime. I then get to play a Ghost Quarter as my land for turn, and sacrifice it targeting Peter's coffers. The coffers dies, and Peter goes to grab an island. Then, using my Path of Ancestry, I cast the Sage of Fables, and scry one, bottoming the card. I then give her the sort of the anime, and cast Lightning Greaves. I put the Greaves onto the wizard, and swing her at Peter for three. I grab a basic island, and then pass to Adam. Adam draws, and recasts a Kiri from his hand. Peter says nope with Counterspell though, and Akiri heads back to the Command Zone instead. Adam then recasts her from the Command Zone, paying the tax, and I get to draw a card. 
he gears up the acrobatic Akiri with the lightning greaves and decides to hit Peter for two more commander damage before passing turn. Scott untaps and draws for turn. At the end of Scott's draw step, Peter pays 7, with 1 extra for the study tax, and he casts Time Stop to end Scott's turn. Scott can't do anything, and we move to Peter's turn. Peter plays an island, and floats one blue before sacrificing his commander seer to draw. Scott also activates the arch to draw a card, and Peter then taps the metal worker, revealing 4 artifacts from hand to make 8 colorless floating mana. Peter then drops a conjurer's closet, and a chromatic lantern, letting me draw from both. He then casts his study again, and I draw once more. Sigiled Starfish then hits the field, and I draw again. Peter then moves to the end of his turn, exiling the Metal Worker, who immediately comes back. I cast Fabricate in my main phase, paying the one extra for Peter's study. I find a Hive Stone, and put it to hand, which kind of telegraphs my turn. Peter sacrifices his Hedron Archive to draw two. I then pay 3 to cast the Hive Stone, and rethink my turn, dropping a Stony Brook Banneret instead, and paying the 1 extra and using the path. I scry 1, and bottom the card. The Banneret also gains a plus 1 plus 1 counter as it enters from the Sage of Fables. I play an Island for turn, and move the Greaves onto the Banneret. Moving to combat, both go at Peter, and the Sword triggers again, grabbing me an Island. Peter can't stop the Banneret because of Island Walk, and decides to just take the full hit for 5. I then discard down to 7, and pass to Adam. Adam plays a Plains, and Scrap Trawler hits the field, which has Peter and I drawing a card. Adam then moves the Greaves onto the Trawler, and pays to equip the sword onto Akiri. Peter uses the Gaunti stolen copy of Swords to Plowshares to try and exile Akiri, but I pay 5 to cast Mystic Confluence, choosing to make Peter have to pay 6 extra for his spell, and draw a card. Peter does get to draw from his study trigger, but with it not being a counter spell, the Swords to Plowshares gets countered, and Akiri survives and gets the hand me down sword and the now stretch out boots from the trawler. Adam then casts the Bloodforged Battle Axe, and Peter and I draw. Scott makes a deal with Adam to help clear the way for Akiri, and before moving from the main phase, Scott casts Chaos Wharf to shuffle away the Starfish, paying the extra one. Peter shuffles it in and reveals a Gilded Lotus, getting to put it onto the field. Adam then hits Peter for 6 with Akiri, and untaps the lands, and forces Peter to discard. Smothering Tide then comes into play in Adam's second main phase, and Peter and I draw. Peter still draws, as Adam pays 1 into each X for his walking ballista again, and Adam in turn gains a treasure token when Peter doesn't pay the 2. Adam then passes to Scott. Scott taps 2 artifacts to untap his basalt monolith, and taps it and the lotus for 6. He casts a Scrap Mastery, and pays 1 to deny Peter the card draw. With the spell on the stack, Adam uses his treasures to add another counter to the Walking Ballista, and he then deals 2 to me with the Ballista's ability, and we swap the artifacts in the field for those in the yard. Peter also floats 1 black and 3 blue from his mana rocks before they get binned. I have my Metamorph come back as a copy of Akiri again, and Adam blows up my Banneret with a Noxious Gear Hulk, gaining 2 life. Scott then finds a basic with a solemn simulacrum, and gains some more mirrors. Scott then decides to uptick Doretti, discarding a card to draw a card. And he casts a mirror works. Scott then casts a soul ring, and pays the two extra to make a token copy of it with the mirror works, while Peter and I draw a card. Adam also gains two treasures, and we then move to Peter's turn. Peter draws, and Adam gains a treasure. Peter then recasts the panharmonicon, letting me draw, and Adam gains another treasure. Hostage Taker then hits the field, and Peter puts the Exile Triggers targeting Paradox Engine and Mere Battlesphere. With the targets declared, Scott sacrifices the engine to his trading post and draws a card. He also pays the 2 for the Smothering Tithe Trigger, and Peter then exiles the Battlesphere. Peter then casts Ponder, while I draw a card and Adam gains a treasure. He rearranges the top 3 and draws, giving Adam another treasure, and then plays an island. Animate Dead then hits the field, letting me draw a card, which in turn gives Adam a treasure. Peter brings back Gaunti, who targets Adam, and then me, and he gets to keep one of the top four from each of us. Peter then passes. I draw, and Adam gains a treasure. We realize at this point that Peter should have put a flood counter on one of his lands, which he puts on the Buried Ruin. I put mine on the Seal of the Synod, and I then cast a Mirror Regery, followed by a Lord of the Unreal, letting Peter draw, which has Adam gaining a treasure. The Lord gains a plus one plus one counter as it enters, 
and I then activate Nykthos for 5 blue. I use 4 of it to cast Master of Waves, letting Peter draw again, giving Adam another treasure, and I then untap Nykthos with the Regery trigger. The Master also gains a counter for being a wizard as it enters. I then reactivate Nykthos with the Floating to help cast a Shapesharer, untapping it again as I cast it, with Peter drawing, Adam gaining a treasure, and the Shapesharer gaining a counter as it enters. Grand Architect then hits the field, while Peter draws and Adam gains a treasure. I then tap the newly cast Architect for two colorless to be used on artifacts, and cast Thought Vessel, paying the one for the study trigger with one of my floating manas from Nykthos. I then tap the Lord and the Shapesharer for more mana to cast a Mirage Mirror, and then a Relic of Progenitus, paying the extras. Tapping my Regery then lets me equip the Stoneforge Masterwork to my Akiri clone, and I swing in at Peter for 7, because Akiri and the Regery share a creature type. Peter blocks with Gonti, and with nothing else I pass to Adam. Adam is one of his basics become an island, and draws and plays a swamp for turn. He has a ton of mana, but with only one card in hand. He casts Tim in his main phase to help remedy this, and heads to combat. He swings the Gear Hulk at Peter, who before leaving the attacker's step, flashes out a cackling counterpart to make a token copy of the hostage taker. The token copy exiles the Gear Hulk and Timna, effectively fogging Adam's combat step. Peter didn't pay the one extra, so I draw a card, which lets Adam gain a treasure. In his second main phase, Adam drops a worm coil engine by paying six treasures. One of Scott's basic lands becomes an island, and he pays seven in his main phase to cast Spine of Ishsa. The spine enters and targets the hostage taker. He doesn't pay for the studies, and Peter and I draw, while Adam gains two treasures. The hostage taker then gets destroyed, and the mirror battles here returns, giving Scott four more mirrors. Scott then downticks to ready to swap the spine with the paradox engine, returning the spine to hand when it hits the graveyard. We then see a voltaic key, which on cast, untaps his soul rings. We then see the spine come back, and Scott pays the two for the study triggers. He also pays two as it enters to make a second copy of it with mirror works. This time, Scott has the spine hit the token copy of the hostage taker and the panharmonicon. Adam gets back his noxious gear hulk, who upon entering destroys my master of waves. This gives Adam three life, also all of my elemental tokens die. Karn, Cyanum Urza then joins the party, untapping Scott's soul rings again, and uses the walker's minus ability to make a construct token that is remarkably large. Moving to combat, Scott swings the solemn and four tokens at Peter for six. Peter draws, and gives Adam a treasure. He then casts his own Noxious Gear Hulk, paying the one extra, and blows up the Construct, gaining 19 life. Next he pays 5 to cast Dark Petition, and with the spell in the stack, I activate the Relic of Progenitus, sacrificing it to exile all graveyards and draw a card. This gives Adam another treasure, and Peter still gets to go find a card, but he doesn't gain 3 black. While he's searching, we compare my exile pile to my library, with the two being almost equal. Peter then casts a Phantasmal Image, having it come in as a copy of the Gear Hulk, and blows up Scott's Mere Battle Sphere, gaining 7 more life. He didn't pay the extra, so I draw, and Adam gains a treasure. Peter then passes, discarding down to 7. I draw, and Adam gains a treasure. I cast a Zombie Lady of Scrolls in my main phase, and not paying the extra lets Peter draw. I then Rapid Fire draw with some wizards, and Adam does his best to keep up with gaining treasures. I'm digging for a Laboratory Maniac at this point, not realizing that I'd already pitched it earlier. I then activate Nykthos for 11 blue, and I cast Inesh. I give the piles to Peter, and take the pile of Cyclonic Rift, dumping the lands. With some of my remaining floating, I have my Mirage Mirror become a copy of Nykthos. I sacrifice the original, and I activate the Mirage Mirror version of Nykthos for another 11. I then overload Cyclonic Rift, not paying the extra, and bounce the board back to my opponent's hands. I then drop a Loxodon on Warhammer, and equip it onto my Akiri clone, and then drop Trophy Mage, and go and find a Diviner's Wand. Moving to combat, I hit Peter for 11 with Akiri, gaining 11, and deal 3 to Scott with a Regery and Grand Architect. Adam has another basic become an island, and he plays a Mana Confluence. He recasts Akiri, and then Noxious Gear Hulk that I'd bounced earlier to his hand. He has it destroy my Akiri, and gains 5 from the Toughness, and then passes to Scott. Scott has another basic become an island, and recasts his Baradox engine, and I draw as he casts a soul ring. 
Scott then casts Karn again, untapping his Sol Ring, and floats 2, using 1 to cast Voltaic Key, untapping his Sol Ring again. He then pays 4 to recast Solemn, untapping his ring as he casts it, and then finding a mountain as it enters. Scott then down takes Karn, making a construct, and passing to Peter. Peter has a swamp become an island, and he plays a morphic pool as his land for turn. He then recasts his phantasmal image as Adam's Gear Hulk and blows up the construct, gaining 5 life as it's destroyed. Peter then casts my Vidalcan Shackles, having stolen my card that steals. He activates it and steals Adam's Gear Hulk before casting a Thran Dynamo, and then a Commander Sphere. Adam asks if I want to draw, but with only 13 cards left, I'm not so keen. Peter then uses an Imprisoned in the Moon to lock down Scott's Karn and passes to me. In my main phase, I cast my own copy of Phantasmal Image, having it become a copy of the Regery. I tap the two Regeries in turn to cast my Diviner's Wand, and equip it to the Shapesharer, and then the Stoneforge Masterwork gets stuck onto it as well, followed lastly by the Loxodon Warhammer. I sing Unesh and the Shapesharer at Peter, tapping two Wizards to draw two cards, and give the Shapesharer flying from the Wand. For good measure, I have the Mirage Mirror become a copy of another Regery, and take Peter out for the count. I gain 18 life, and then pass to Adam. Adam draws, and has a plains become an island. He casts an Umazawa's Jite, and equips it onto a Kiri. He swings her at me, which I block with the Grand Architect. The Jite still gains the counters, and Adam uses the counters to finish off the Architect. In his second main phase, Adam casts Smothering Tithe again, and passes to Scott. Scott draws, and Adam gains a treasure. Mirrorworks then rejoins the fray, and Scott casts Spine of Ishsa, paying the two extra to make a second copy of it. He hits my Stoneforge Masterwork, and Lord of the Unreal. Scott then makes another Construct with Karn, who will hopefully live through one turn cycle, and passes to me. I draw, and play an Island, casting Arcane Adaptation, and naming Slivers. I then dropped a Shifting Sliver, as Adam remembers to add his treasures. I then cast a Master of the Pearl Trident, and my board is nice and beefy. With my unblockable army, I have enough to take Scott out, and I gain 9 life while doing it with style. Adam has another basic become an island, and draws for turn. He moves to cast Helm of the Host, which I promptly stop with Cryptic Command, countering the spell and tapping his creatures. He then recasts that Wormquill engine in his hand, and passes. I draw for turn, and use Curse of the Swine to exile a Kiri and Wormquill engine from existence. I head to combat, having the Mirage Mirror become another copy of Regery, and have enough to take Adam out in one swing with my Merfolk slash Silver Army. So a big thank you to Scott, Adam, and Peter for coming out and joining me at Wizard's Tower. Today's game might have been long, but it was full of action, responses, and lots of twists and turns. I was immensely impressed by Scott's ability to pick up and play Doretti as well as he did, and considering he'd never even seen my list of the 99, he got so close to winning with Spine of Isha and Trading Post and Paradox Engine that it really freaked me out. If he'd been able to get one or two more mana rocks, the turn that he had the Paradox Engine cycle going, I think this would have been game. He would have been able to loop the Spine of Isha, sacrificing it to the Trading Post, and basically blowing up all of our boards. Peter's Atrata deck, despite the fact that he never cast his commander, was incredibly controlling and very, very powerful. I liked Demir, I liked what he was doing with it, and I think the deck did a good job of balancing ways to win and control the board. As always, it seems like in these games there's always one deck that's camera shy, and unfortunately for Adam, it seemed to be his Akiri and Timna deck. He was very behind in lands, and by the time that he got a ton of mana from the Smothering Tithe, which was pretty impressive with his 18 treasures, I think the game was a bit out of his reach. Misform performed pretty admirably, and being able to make my army unblockable with a shifting sliver is always a good move. I still haven't finalized my cuts, which is why you haven't seen a Conquering Your Commander yet, and I'll do so in the next few days, and hopefully have a video up in the next few weeks. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.